today's video, what I want to discuss is what it takes team wise, structure wise, organizationally wise, what does that look like to reach a million dollars a month in consistent revenue for your D 2 C e commerce business. Now, who am I? Why should you even listen to me? Well, my name is Chris Hernandez. I'm the founder of scalevelocity.io. I have a portfolio of brands under management in which pretty much what we do is we're helping these brands get set up for exits through a holistic approach with everything paid media, with everything uh, team structure wise, so on and so forth. So we're actively not only running these ads in our portfolio, but we're also collectively consulting and training the founders that we partner with so that we have a very lean operation. So on average, in a given month, we manage anywhere from north of 800 to a million a month in ad spend, depending on seasonality. But especially like this Q4 Black Friday, our Monday, we're forecasting to spend well above 2 million plus, right? Just from our brands under management. Now I say this to say, structurally, I've seen different nuances of different companies, right? I've seen a business, what that structure looks like for an eight figure a year e-com brand versus a seven figure a year e-com brand versus a six figure a year e-com brand. I've seen levels comparison to what that structure looks like. And quite frankly, the misconception a lot of beginners have when they're starting out in their e-com brand, right? Or they're doing, let's say six figures a year. The misconception is you need a big team to manage to scale to seven to eight. In reality, brands that are have like a 25, 50 employee staff at multiple eight, seven figures a year, especially if you have a 20 to 25 person staff for just paid media running ads, there you're pretty much just overpaying and you have saturated fat within your company. So in today's economy, a looming recession, economy going up and down, consumer behavior is uncertain. How can we guarantee our way to success? Well, this is exactly what I'm gonna break down. First of all, before we can even talk about scaling a company, we need to understand what is the overall structure to getting set up for an exit, right? What do investors look for in business? Well, if I look at the steps laid out here, the very first factor that's going to either make or break our business is validating product market fit. Is our product wanted in the market by consumers? Because if you have a terrible product, a mediocre product, it's not generating sales organically, and then you try to run paid ads to that, you're not going to see any success long term. Sure, you might see some quick success or some quick cash, but longevity wise, after year two, year three, year four, you're not going to have a business. So it's very important that first things first is we need to have a product that has market fit, which generally is this product has generated at least anywhere from 100K minimum within a year, two years. And that kind of is showing you a proof of concept. Now, once we have a product that's validated, right? The goal is we want to be diversified across multiple ad channels as possible, but we're limited with our ad spend, right? We're limited with our profitability. So instead of just running ads across multiple platforms from the very beginning, we want to focus on one single channel, scale that really hard and then diversify. So this is typically like meta access channel. Once we scale really hard, then we diversify into Google because logically that's just going to help the funnel. We see incremental lift when we introduce to Google and we might find a third channel to find new traffic. This might be a TikTok. This might be a YouTube, but regardless, we need to validate market fit. We need to know our numbers, which is dialing in the unit economics. We need to build marketing assets, creative, uh, creative signing pages, offers for our said hero products. We need to analyze the access channels to validate and optimize our product. So typically, like I said before, the hierarchy is we start with meta, diversify into Google, then look for a third channel, maybe YouTube, maybe TikTok. Once we have consistent creative creative concepts uh, being produced we're looking to now make iterations to everything we test so the compartments of what it takes to build a, a seven figure a year business or an eight figure a year econ business the team structure is three departments right creative department the creative department is anything a to z with creative production static images gifs ugc post-production editing so on and so forth that's one team. Typically it's just, you might have a creative strategist that does everything end to end, but when we're trying to optimize for scale, it's literally just a creative strategist on the creative team and editor. That's it. Creative strategist is coming up with concepts. The editor is bringing the concepts to life and then making iterations or revisions to final concepts to launch for ads. Now that's just the creative team. Pretty lean, pretty simple. That's all you need. Now you might 
look to have like a creative coordinator somebody specifically to reach out for ugc creators but you don't have to worry about that until scale now the second department like i said is the media buying team maybe it's one or two full stack media buyers that can run ads on meta google youtube or tiktok but regardless the media buyer's job is to overall lay the strategy test different campaign structures so on and so forth go back to the drawing board with the creative strategies and then get feedback on okay this is the batch of creatives you gave me from our test this week we tested these concepts, here were the results. And then the creative strategist's job is to go in and analyze that data and reverse engineer ways to build winning concepts. So then in theory, the more we test, the more we have an understanding of what's working, what's not working, and then you're expanding the funnel with different awareness stages with said creative concepts. The third team tied to that, like I said, I covered the creative, I covered the mini bank team. And then the third team might, or the third compartment might be like a fractional CMO or like the founder making sure everything is on brand, looking at analyzing the overall health of the business, analyzing the PL, so on and so forth. And overall, just setting the forecast for ad spend. Because the last thing we want to do is test a bunch of strategies and we're not making any profit. That's conservative. That's really what the in house team structure It really is just a team of five creative strategist, editor, one or two full stack media buyers, maybe a creative coordinator. That's all you need to build your in-house media buying team. Now, if you go and work with agencies, agencies have the same exact structure. They have that team of five, creative strategist, editor, full stack media buyer. So what difference is it for you to replicate it yourself versus outsourcing to somebody else who has a roster of different clients? They not really, they don't really care about your business versus somebody who you hire, who you build into a part of your company. Their job is to help you grow your business. And they're only focused on helping you grow your business. That's the beauty of having your in-house team. The second, third, and or, uh, fourth order benefits of having an in-house team is, well, you have SOPs that you can build so that when you do make hires or you're looking to expand, you already have the foundations in place of what uh, the hiring SOPs look like so that you can onboard and train future talent. And the beauty of us when you choose to partner us with us is we have all of this laid out, clicked up integrations. Uh, how to introduce a creative flywheel system, uh, media buying strategy, so on and so forth. Everything is tailor made and, and just made to a T so that we just implement, integrate, and pretty much scale. Now, once we have creative concepts, once we're scaling, we're making, we're looking to now look at areas outside of the funnel, right? So we already covered creatives, media buying strategy. We might look at funnel iterations. We might look to A-B test landing pages. We might A-B test offers, so on and so forth. But we're now we're trying to see, okay, if creatives are dialed, if the offer works really well, how can we increase conversion rate on the back end, right? Maybe changing, playing around with landing pages, so on and so forth. And then simultaneously, we're looking to diversify, scale across Meta, Google, maybe YouTube or TikTok. Uh, there's room here to implement post purchase surveys, not necessary, but at scale, right? How do we get set up for an exit? Well, we need to push higher AOV bundles, keep raising uh, the overall AOV on the front end while trying to reduce the CPA. It's a lot easier than it sounds. And then as a byproduct on the back end, we need to have strong LTV. So this is like building a community, right? Having the ability to raise capital for future growth, expanding its new markets. But the more you're diversified, right? And I want to paint a vivid picture where if I look at a brand and I compare it to somebody who, for the most part, is in the early stages, you have to be having a general understanding of what is your long term end goal, right? Are you looking to get set up for an exit and you want to do that in the next 20 years, 25 years? and you want to try to gain the fattest multiple possible, well, if that is your strategy, right? This is just one area of e-commerce, right? This is just online retail, online sell. You still have yet to tap into retail, physical products being in Walmart, being in Target, and even wholesale distribution. So when you have paid online media dialed, you have the luxury now to expand into retail, to expand into wholesale because you have proof of concept. You can go into either investors or people that manage distribution on that side you can bring to them, hey, look, this is what our business does online. And we're looking to expand it to retail. You have proof of concept. You have more leeway to gain access to said channels. And then if you're really trying to build for an exit, if you're profitable on online uh, paid media, if you're scaling really hard in retail and even wholesale, that's what investors want. They want diversity. They want less risk in a terrible economy. And as a byproduct, they want to have operations in house. They want lean a lean team. So I've studied uh, to an extent, I've, I've been researching like famous brands that have gotten set up for an exit. So I'm trying to really dive in on the protocol they utilize that we can just redistribute to our partners. But what I've noticed is founders that scale really hard for exits, they always stay pretty lean, lean team. And 
It's always a game of product innovation, new products, higher AOVs, reducing the CPA, and then having a really good product, having a strong community, so that that reduces your LT. So if I were to simplify this, it's if you're do doing less than six figures a year, it's generally, if you're the founder, you're doing everything at Izzy. You're doing content, you're doing a product development, a product research, innovating your product, running ads, so on and so forth. You're the founder, you have to bootstrap. That's just kind of the luck of the draw. Now, when you hit seven figures a year, you have validated market fit, validated product. Uh, maybe you're scaling on one channel, uh, but you haven't really hit entropy yet. You don't. You might not know what you're doing. From there, you might, might look to now segue into hires. You're managing the ads, but you hire a consultant to teach you on how to optimize the ads, and then you're just constantly pushing higher every bundle, so on and so forth. Then you look to introduce one of these hires. Maybe you create strategies, and then you still manage the ads. Or you have a mini bar, but you still manage career strategy, whatever. Then you slowly start to integrate these roles where you have a career strategy. Then you have an editor. Then you have a full stack media bar. Then you're scaling. So I say this to say scaling is simple, but it's not easy. And I try my best to map it out in a way that makes sense. If you have any questions, let me know. But if you want to skip the phase of you getting burned by ad agencies or spending a lot of time just doing this by yourself with no uh, success or no direction, Check out scalevelocity.io. You can read my free 30 page protocol going super in depth on how to get set up for an exit. And as a byproduct as well, if you feel like you're qualified, you feel like you're ready for the next step, you can book a call and speak directly with me. I'll analyze your business, I'll audit it and, and see if it's a good fit. If I feel like you have potential, I'll make you an offer and then you could be potentially one of our partners in our portfolio. And if not, if I think you're not ready yet, you're not at that stage, regardless, you're gonna get free resources and advice from myself saying, okay, at this stage of your business, this is what I would focus on, just given my history of uh, our portfolio of brands under management and brands at, at similar stages in your position. So with that being said, guys, if you have any questions, drop them down below. Make sure you guys comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.